Welcome to Rhino CFD Basics. In this video we will illustrate the principles of meshing a domain correctly for a general flow simulation case within Rhino CFD. A little background first. In general, in CFD the idea is that you subdivide the domain into many small control volumes and then evaluate the Navier-Stokes equations for pressure, momentum, temperature and other variables at each of these cells. The more cells you have, the more accurate the representation of your scenario will be. However, the simulation will take a longer time and a greater computational expense to complete and converge. There are many types of meshes can be used for this, each with its advantages and disadvantages. Rhino CFD uses Cartesian or cylindrical polar structured meshes, which are very easy to set up and easier to produce converged results. Rhino CFD uses an immersed boundary method called parcel that automatically detects what part of the cell is solid and what part is fluid and applies a correct boundary condition to the relevant part of the cell. This means that you don't need to spend hours correctly defining the mesh so that it perfectly fits your geometry. Just ensure that you have enough cells in the region and let Rhino CFD do the hard work. Setting up a good mesh in Rhino CFD is e very easy. First, we click on the Z button to display a planned view of our mesh. Note that it has already been created, we simply need to refine it. Clicking on the X or the Y meshes will display a different view of the same mesh. We can see that the domain has been split into regions, which are separated by the orange lines. These regions are numbered from 1 onwards in all three directions, with region 1 being the closest to the origin of axis. The first step is to identify our main area of interest. In this case, we are modeling free surface flow past a boat hull. The area which we want to refine is a section of hull in contact with water, which is this region here. To modify a particular region, we can left click on the mesh button on the toolbar and bring up the mesh control panel. Here we can see the total size of our domain in all three directions, the total number of cells in each direction, the tolerance, which indicates the minimum size of a region, the number of regions. After this, we have a button which will modify the mesh in a particular direction. Clicking on it brings up the following panel. Here we can modify all the regions in the X direction. We can edit the number of cells and their distribution using either power or geometric laws. In general, if using the power law, you don't want a value larger than 1.3, and if using a geometric law, no larger than 1.1. Setting a negative power simply reverses the direction of the compression. Looking at the length of the regions, I can say that I want 18 cells in region 1, and 56 and 52 in the regions 2 and 3. To ensure the cell size between the regions is roughly the same, I am going to use the geometric setting of minus 1.1 and 1.1 for regions 1 and 3 respectively. A rule of thumb is that a cell should be no more than 50% bigger or smaller than the cell next to it. We can now click OK and do the same for the other directions and we're good to go. Thanks for watching this Rhino CFD Basics video. For more information, please visit rhinocfd.com.